Hello and welcome back to the ROI channel, channel that's obsessed with the art and science of return on investment. Today, I'm just giving an update on Vertex Energy. It was a stock I had analyzed, there have been some recent changes, and so I'm going to go over that um, and with my updated thoughts, analysis, and valuation. Disclaimer, I am not an advisor. Nothing I say here is advice of any kind. This is just me doing what I do and sharing it with the world for entertainment slash documentation purposes. So don't copy me. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. Uh, this is just me. Everyone's position is different. So having said that, let's have a, a recap. When I, I made the original video, uh, this thing was trading at $3.44. The thesis was um, they'd done an incredible job building up their revenue. They had 10x the revenue in, in a year, basically, buying a refinery for a fraction of its replacement cost. $75 million they paid for the refinery. And uh, the last quarter, as I was making the video, they had uh, done almost $42 million in net income in one quarter. Um uh, overall, so they had sixty million in their conventional. They had twenty one in their renewable uh, as a loss, and so netted, netting that out uh, came to to forty million in quarter. So it was printing cash, and it had a, a good moat. And so I thought that the market was wrong. The market was worried about uh, maturity, a debt coming due at the end of twenty twenty five. Uh, in 2025 for 150 million dollars and i said hang on a minute this thing has uh, roughly half of that 78 79 million dollars in cash they can pay that down in half they can sell non-core assets and they're printing it you know call it 160 mil uh, in net income a year if they can hit 40 million every quarter the capex is coming way down they've got no much not much more left to spend there they can cover that easily and then they're they're absolutely off to the races and printing so <laughs> no sooner had I made that video than the company comes out at the start of this year and says that they've just borrowed another fee or added 150 uh, added 50 million to the 150 million dollars because they were going to do uh, some kind of acquisitions. Uh, I still don't understand it. And that's a thesis break. Uh, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think the company can can work around it, but it's not what I was in there for. And so I reduced my position significantly in my personal portfolio completely uh, in any portfolio that other people have invested in or are copying. So as of today, where are we at? Here's the term loan 2025, 148. That's now closer to 200 million. So I go into my DCF and I've I've updated uh, I've updated that. Okay. So we're at 150. It, it's really um, closer to 290 when you take into account the rest of accounts payable, um, et cetera. So that's what I'm uh, loading on the company for their debt. I've lowered the discount rate a little bit to their cost of debt, 16% is roughly what they're paying as interest on that um, particular term. I also lowered the EBITDA multiple to eight from 12. You can agree or disagree with that. Uh, I'm trying to be very pessimistic and I've also uh, allocated a 30% dilution. So if they have to do what they did last year and issue 30% of their float in stock for which the market really punished them because shareholders weren't happy. Um, I've added that in here as well. So this is a very pessimistic viewpoint. I had estimated the intrinsic value of the company at around about $13. Uh, what do I see now? Well, for me, it doesn't matter because I don't know what they're doing. Uh, I don't know why they've decided to go this particular route. It's not the way I would handle it as the, the CFO or the CEO. What I would do is um, consolidate this acquisition, prove to the market um, that that they can do it as a company, pay down the debt. Why would I do that? Well, one, you'll get a re-rate in the stock. You've got, if they pay this off and then people realize that, oh, holy moly, this is a $13, $14 a share company, and you'd have almost a almost a, a quintupling in the stock price. And what does that allow you to do? Well, that allows you, you could then issue equity at a, a fairer price and you could take that equity and do more acquisitions if you had acquisitions um, in mind. And Ben Cole has proven that he can do really good acquisitions and grow the top line revenue. You would also have access to cheaper capital because you <laughs> Your balance sheet was better and the market doesn't think you're going to go bankrupt. And so instead of paying 16%, you could pay, I don't know, maybe 7 8 9%. Or uh, you could issue some bonds. Who knows? They'd have all these different options. So I don't know why they're doing this. 
And if I don't know why, I gotta I gotta really back off. And it's annoying because I think that it, it could work in the future. So using analyst numbers for the EBIT, which I think are too low, I still think the thing is worth somewhere close to 350. Um, and I've sold some 350 puts. Uh, I received, they're the only ones I kept. I, I, I closed out some other positions at a small loss. Average entry will be for me if I get assigned these things at $2 because I received $1.50 in the premium and I thought that the risk was worth it. Just for me, a very disciplined, small position for my speculative capital, okay? 50% upside, 24% IRR um, as of today's price, okay? If I have to be assigned the, at two bucks, reinvest the cash and the premium, you know, I'm looking a little closer to 27. Be that as it may, this is purely using analyst estimates. Um, you'll notice the CapEx has come down a lot. That's much more in line with what the company is guiding. The company is guiding uh, almost $100 million more than this um, as of last year. And I think that they can do it again this year. If we were to say the company could do roughly $40 million a quarter, meaning their renewables continue to, to, to lose money in that segment and that beautiful refinery just continues to print out 40 million in cash per quarter. Uh, I don't know, let's be even more conservative and say 150 million in, in EBIT. Let's say that they can go out at only 5%. And then we're looking at somewhere close to seven bucks, um, which is close to a, close to a three bagger um, over the next four years, if they can, if they can pull it off. So the issue is, is less you know, I mean, they've got nearly $250 million worth of um, of PPE. They could sell a lot of that off and pay it down. The issue is not so much the numbers or, or whether they can do it. The issue is what the hell is management doing? And if I can't answer that thesis break, uh, I got to sit it out at least um, in the capital that other people are, are copying or following. And so, yeah, that's my update for now, guys. Uh, I do still have a small exposure in what I hope will be a intelligent speculation um this is what i think uh, the thing is is worth at the moment uh, i think you know somewhere close to, to 350 and um, yeah adding on the debt and allowing for 30 percent dilution and um, who knows what could happen they could let's say they have to do a, a 50 percent dilution and uh, then we start to get closer to um, closer where the stock's currently trading and um, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. Um, if we've got a hundred percent dilution, that's almost the market's almost. Uh, you know, to my estimates here, the market's almost pricing in a hundred percent dilution. Um, so the, you know, if, there could be some opportunity. Uh, I'll have a look at some long dated call options and see whether I think they're worth it. But for now, uh, I've significantly reduced position, and I think it's a wait and see purely to see how management uh, act over the next quarter. So it'll be very interesting to read the next 10Q. Uh, that's it for now, guys. Take care and I look forward to catching up with you in another video shortly.